Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another Teach Me to Code screencast. This is Charles Maxwood, and uh, this week I'm going to jump into uh, just the way that uh, Rails uses CoffeeScript and, uh, and, and stuff to manage all this. Now let me close all this out so I can just kind of show you uh, one step at a time. I'm using the Rails 3.1 beta. If you want the latest uh, beta version of Rails, you do a sudo uh, gem install rails space dash dash pre and the dash dash pre will get the latest pre-release version. Uh, as of this recording, it is uh, rails 3.1.0 beta. So anyway, um, I'm just going to jump in here really quickly and go into some of the the stuff that is involved with the CoffeeScript um, handling in Rails 3 uh, that, that's going to be in the next version. So if you come up here, you can see that there is this uh, assets under app. And if you open it up, then you can see that there's images, JavaScripts, and style sheets. Um, when, you get, when you first start your application, all you have is application.js. Um, I actually ran a generator that generated a contact scaffold that has just like name, email, and uh, phone number. And so it generated this co contacts.js.coffee. And that's actually what we're going to be playing with here for a minute uh, just to kind of show you what's there. So basically, um, I'm just going to jump in here and I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick demo. So this is CoffeeScript, so I can actually get away with uh, doing this. So first name. Last name equals wood. That's me. And then we can do something like alert. first name plus now I know that there is string concatenation with uh, with the co uh, coffee script uh, I'm not going to play with that right now um, anyway so then if we turn around and we fire up our server I've already bundled and migrated and all of that stuff so you don't have to worry about uh, watching me do all that stuff it does it the same way as the other Rails 3 versions. So then if we open up um, contacts here, then it then it alerts. And what I want to show you here is if we go ahead and view the source, then all that's included is assets application.js and application.css. Uh, and the inter interesting thing here is, is if you come down here to public, there is no uh, assets folder and so what what's going on is this is all being managed by uh, sprockets and I don't think it's listed here it's actually included in rails anyway so uh, that's something to be aware of is that you know you can't directly act uh, edit that file however um, before you uh, freak out <laughs> or worry about that you can see here the application JS actually includes uh, jQuery. It also includes all of the JavaScript files that you're going to need to manage Rails. And then the last thing here is you can see that it has compiled um, compiled my CoffeeScript to JavaScript and put it here at the bottom of the file. So all of this stuff that's above it is available uh, to this. And it, it uses jQuery and it, it works just fine. So that means then that if we um, So then what, what this means then is if we if we come back over here and we, sorry, I had to look something up real quick. Um, and we uh, enter in here, let's say that we do something different here. So instead of doing this, what we'll do is we'll do the, um, Oops. 
In fact, well, let's do this kind of coffee script esque. So we're going to highlight the H1s. And uh, we're going to use uh, jQuery to do it. So H1, because you can you can use selectors, you can do tag selectors here too. So the H1.css uh, background yellow. So then if we turn around and uh, we reload this page here, then it highlights it. And so you can see that all the, the jQuery stuff is available. And if we come back over here and we refresh, then you can see that the new compilation is here. Um, in production environment, it actually caches this file uh, so that it doesn't have to generate it every time. But it's pretty convenient that in the uh, uh, development environment, it is available and, and changes as you change your, your files. So one other thing that I really like and intend to do with this is, let me come back over here, is that uh, you can actually then uh, do some setup. So for example, uh, let's say that I wanted to um, create a new file here. And we're going to call this one um, app setup js.coffee so then what in what I can do in here is I can actually uh, pull the controller and the um, and the action I, I'd have to do some setup in my controller to pass that data out but then what I can do is I can I can based on my um, my parameters I can set up the controller in action and then in here what I can do is I can actually then go ahead and you know if uh, controller is uh, contacts you know and then I can set up all of this stuff so then it it all it all only happens if I'm within the contacts controller and so I can control what shows up um, as I'm working now style sheets it's the same deal it's exactly the same thing so if I put some SAS or CSS in here um, then I can then it will compile using this uh, application.css and it'll work just fine so this is just a quick demonstration let you know that, that this stuff's here it's out there and ready for you to play with um, it actually looks really really cool and I really like the fact that it can then uh, generate these these uh, JavaScript files for you uh, compile them and put them out there for you to use. So uh, thanks for watching. Next week I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into uh, CoffeeScript. Uh, there's there's more stuff. Uh, the thing that I think I'm most excited to show off is actually the classes and the class structure in in JavaScript. So or in CoffeeScript. So stay tuned for that. And uh, one other thing I want to remind you of is that if you go to RubyRogues.com, there's actually a discussion up there with uh, James Edward Gray. Uh, Aaron Patterson, Peter Cooper, David Brady, and myself, and we all talked about uh, testing and testing frameworks and testing practices. It was an excellent discussion. Um, the, the, the audio was a little bit raw, um, but we're working on that, and hopefully I'll have everything set up next week so that when we record it, it won't have those issues. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll catch you next week. Do you want to learn Ruby on Rails? And then sign up for my six-week course at teachmetocode.com slash Rails course. Need expert help with your Ruby, Rails, or Sinatra application? Give me a call. My phone number is 801-367-6164, or you can email me, Chuck, at teachmetocode.com. Thank you. New Relic is the leading provider of application performance management tools for Ruby and Java applications. Thousands of companies use New Relic RPM to monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize applications deployed either in the cloud or in dedicated hosting environments. RPM Lite is free, fully supported, unlimited time version available at www.newrelic.com. All the leading Rails companies use New Relic including 37Signals, AT&T Interactive, Shopify, OurStage, IGN, and lots more.
was wonderful. Bravo. I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, it though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away. Ah!